could you imagine if you had to relocate to a different country? For example, I live in Kenya and someone said, you have to move to Iceland, totally different environment. You get there and you're stressed out. This is exactly what plants actually go through when they go into a different environment and they get shocked and stressed and they get transplant shock. So this plant, if you remember, we did an episode, it had actually been shocked, it was drooping, it looked terrible. And basically I have revived it and it is actually so big, this African daisy, but it is a memory for me because I have nurtured it to get it to this stage. But transplant shock is actually something that you can prevent and that's what we're talking about today tips on how to prevent your plant or your tree going into transplant shock. So welcome back. I'm Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. Now what is transplant shock? How does it affect a plant? Transplant shock is actually when you're taking a tree or a, sh a shrub or a, just a flower plant from its normal environment to a different environment. So we're looking at the soil medium, change of soil medium. You're looking at the light, uh, how much light did it have in its old place compared to its new home. You're looking at uh, the wind and you're looking at all these factors and suddenly you're bringing in a plant to your home, a different environment, and it gets stressed out. With the result, you get drooping leaves, the leaves go yellow and they fall, or you get wilting. It's just basically a change of environment. So what we need to do is actually prepare that plant in different ways, which I will give you tips, so that when it does come in, it has a smooth transition in its new home. Now you see what happens to a plant is that once it goes into this, once it does get stressed and it gets shocked, what happens is it shuts down, it goes into survival mode. So what it does, it stops providing the leaves or the branches or the, or the flowers any water because it's telling, it's, uh, telling itself I need to supply the roots because that's the only way I can survive. So that's why you get the yellowing of the leaves and the drooping and the wilting. It's basically the plant is in survival mode and it's thinking about how it can actually help itself to get over this period. So let's assume you go to a nursery and you buy your potted plant. Now what you need to do is when you do bring it home is basically leave it in its original pot for a week. Let it settle, you're not in a rush, because if you rush and take it from its original container and start potting it straight away, remember you have moved it from a nursery situation into your home and now you're potting it, it's going to go into shock. So during this period, do leave your plant in its own original container for that week and then you wait and then you start repotting. Once you do decide you're going to repot is your original, well, your original container with the plant, keep it moist. And the new container where you're going to repot the plant, keep that soil also moist, but not drenched. So when you're moving now the plant out of this moist soil, its original container, and moving it into the new container, the difference of the water, it doesn't get a shock. On the other hand, if you do, for example, not water the plant and then move it straight into a new container where it's not moist, the plant will go into shock because it lacks the water. So this is another method that if you use it, at least you're not going to traumatize your plant. Another point I'd like to make is another, the best times to do all your planting in Europe 
or in America is during the spring and the autumn because the temperatures are not so high. If you decide now to do all your planting in summer where the temperatures these days soaring is your plant could go into transplant shock. So try to have a plan of when you're deciding to plant your plants in your garden. Have it mostly in spring and autumn. Now the other thing, so you get your plant and you repot it into this new uh, pot. Try to make sure that all the roots are under the soil. And second thing is that try to get all the air pockets out. So gently press and make sure that that soil is actually not, not compact still light and aerated but just make sure you don't get air pockets because that can also cause transplant shock. Now once you got to the stage that you have potted or let's say you have planted, replanted your bush or your tree in the soil, message hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Just give it as much water, not drenched but moist ensure that the plant gets water every day. In that way, at least the roots will start getting stronger. And in the end, you'll have a success story. So as we understand is that you could give that uh, plant a lot of love by overwatering, but always remember that plants don't like to be overwatered because they don't like water around their roots because in the end, you may even get root rot. Just make sure that the soil is moist. Always do your finger test and make sure that um, you have not overwatered your plant. Second thing is that sometimes you could buy a plant that has a lot of foliage like this, but make sure that when you're watering that the water doesn't spill over the foliage or for example, a canna lily, which has a, a, a massive, uh, oval leaves is that sometimes when you do have to water it make sure it's not watered on the leaf make sure that you get to water in the soil around the roots in that way the, the roots are nurtured the next step is the most crucial because now you have actually repotted your plant you have watered it now what are you going to do with that plant if it says um, it's an African daisy and likes full sun, for example? Don't take it out into full sun because at the moment this plant is so fragile. It's trying to find its environment, how it can survive. Now if you put it in full sun, it'll start to transpire and lose a lot of its liquid, whatever water and it will go into shock. So what you do, you take your plant and keep it in a shaded area because it is still very fragile. You nurture it, water it every day, make sure that it doesn't have full sun because in the end, if it does get full sun, you've lost your plant and you will get a transplant shock. The last tip I'd like to give you is that sometimes the root structure has not fully developed to be able to support the whole plant. And so what is happening is that the plant, the, the roots are not pushing all that water to the plant. So in order to help the root and the plant is do pruning, cut, up, cut back by about a third. In that way, you don't end up with so much foliage that the poor roots cannot send the water, but by cutting it, you're giving less stress to the plant and it may start growing. The last step I'd like to give you is just be patient. You know, in the end, it will all work out. If you follow all those tips, it will work out. And in the end, you'll get like my African daisy, which I've actually started calling Sheila because I have nurtured this, this baby plant since it got shocked and it has worked. So all I'm just saying is that thank you for following our episode this time and really good luck. Write to me if you do have a problem and don't forget to like and share and press that notification bell and also subscribe and get others to subscribe. So thank you fellow gardeners and look after your plant and, and just be patient and all will be well. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.